Hello everyone. So I don't know if you remember this, but we never opened these. They came in um, during my birthday in August and I never opened them. So I thought since I'm about to do some stuff in my Anamula sketchbook here, and by the way, for those of you who are new to the channel, welcome. Thank you so much for being here. Why don't you introduce yourself to me and let me know um, what you're up to. If you paint or if you have a channel of your own or whatever, just, just let me know. I'd love to um, to see what you're up to. In any case, I'm, I made this myself. So you will not find Anamula <laughs> sketchbooks. I just happen to really like this paper. And... Um, I also made Arches ones for myself and Bockingford, which I wasn't as thrilled with the Bockingford. I really love Arches paper. You'll get to know that about me. And now I really like the Anamula. And you know, it's funny because the difference in the papers, is really wild. Like Arches is very crisp. You know, it's like, it's crispy really crispy and the textured side is really textured it's cool but this anambula it's different like there's a different texture to it it's not as crispy but it's like soft like I don't know you just want to <laughs> you just want to rub on it <laughs> it's pretty funny so I really haven't decided yet which one I like better I like them both so I probably will just keep making Anamula sketchbooks and um, Arches sketchbooks. So these are two Escoda brush sets and these are by really well-known master watercolor artists that I've always followed and so it was interesting to get their um, their signature sets. You see me paint a lot with this one and this was from another signature set. This one was from the Fabio Crown Brunelli, and he does, um, he does really beautiful, beautiful paintings. You should look him up. And we figured out that they're not called Prado. If you want to buy these separately, they are made in a different, they do have them, but they're made in a different material or different uh, fiber. These are the Prado ones and I just love them. I really do. It. They're really amazing. There is a, there's a one other brush that came with it and I'm trying to think, I mean, I'll show you what, where my brushes. These are like my really good brushes are over here now in this thing that I got for uh, my birthday. This is a, this is one by David Taylor. So there's a David Taylor set that I really like too in the blue, but I've had really good luck with these sets so far. I like, I like the curated sets. Like this came with the David Taylor set. It's a really beautiful brush. It's such a beautiful wash brush. But I'm trying to remember which one came with these. No, I don't know. I'm going to have to figure it out. Oh, it might have been, you know what? I think, I think it's like my favorite brush maybe was the one that came with it. I don't know. We'll figure it out. When I'm using them, I'll try and remember to look at the bottom but at this point after the birthday I have a ton of a Skoda I want to say that like there's one that's like this but it's got to be in this color okay I won't I won't go through all the brushes even though they're fun so in any case this is by Joseph Zbuvkvik and he is you should go look him up he's really great terrific artist and this is by Alvaro Kaznet. They are very similar, but he's known for putting his brushes through strong punishment. So um, this one's supposed to, it's a synthetic, it's supposed to hold its um, point for a long time. I really liked the fact that this is really long, super long professional brushes. And I actually, I don't think I actually have anything this long. And that was this is an eight and a 10 and a 12 round and it's Prado uh, tame synthetic sable hair. One of the most valuable synthetics due to its great similarity to Kalinsky sable hair. It does not only imitate its color, 
but it also imitates its natural spring and brush stroke response. So looking at the way he paints, hang on, let me move this. Looking at the way he paints, um, I feel like Alvaro, he is a very uh, expressive painter. I did not know these were so long. This is kind of really cool. It's going to hit my camera when I try and paint with these. These are definitely great ways to loosen up your style because like if you were to paint on your easel with these and you hold the brush farther away, um, I think that's originally why they were made so, so long. You know, of course, it's going to give you a much looser stroke, but check these out. Look at these beautiful points. I'm going to put them in water right now and we're going to see how they go. Cool. I can't wait to try this. So I, I always kind of just, when I'm playing in my sketchbook, coming up with ideas, I always just divide it up because I find it less intimidating when you're trying something new. And yes, I am always trying new things and it's good just to, you know, have the spaces already divided and be able to play like that. So you should give it a try, especially if your sketchbook is intimidating you a little bit. These are beautiful too. Ooh, another travel brush. Like I needed another travel brush. I have trusted Escoda brushes for many years. Their ability to hold shape and their amazing fine point makes them a perfect brush for the task. I would be lost without them. Uh, leading master of his time in watercolor painting. He is really well known and he's excellent. There's tons of videos on him on YouTube. You should definitely go and check out his work. Uh, so these are the Perla round point size 8 and 12, and then a travel brush round point size 10. Boy, after this birthday, I think I have like every, every brush. <laughs> it's crazy. But I'm excited to try these today and see what they're like. I don't know if we'll get to paint with all of them in this, this sketchbook session, but I certainly will give it a go. I'll try and see what they're like. Perla Barcelona by Joseph Zubrick. See how they have the, they're a special color. They're a special, like a, you can't buy them separate. Um, and it's got his little signature or his signature on it. I don't think they make a uh, travel brush that's the white hair with in the Escoda Perla size 10. So I think this is the only way I would assume this is the only way to get these particular brushes because that's what's happened so far with the other ones too. You can't buy them separately, but look how beautiful. I love that. Now there is another set that he makes that's um, full of the really big, big brushes like this. Uh, but I already have them because I have the Ultimo. Um, these are both Ultimos and I have Prados and you know all kinds of great big brushes so I did not get the other ones if I wouldn't have already had them in in similar sizes I probably would just get the other set now that I look at it it's kind of really nice <laughs> I don't know we'll see if they ever have another brush sale but I'm pretty good with brushes for right now okay so when you get a new brush it's always good to um, soak it in some water and you just want to try and get the sizing and the glue off of it. Um, you might not even entirely get it off the first time. If you have brush wash, that's always really good too, but I'm not really worried about it right now because I'm just going to be playing in my sketchbook. So ultimately it's going to come off, but this is a really good brush cleaner that I love to use. I'll link it. I actually forgot to put it in my materials box and you know what? My um, beginner's watercolor sketchbook class launched today so I'm so excited because a bunch of people are taking the class and I can't wait to hear their feedback and see what they want um, me to add to it you know I'm all about adding bonus more bonus stuff in there I think there's like 42 videos in the um, sketchbook class at JacquelineJacks.com there will be a link below these are beautiful oh my goodness Look at the size look at the length of these brushes I mean like look at the length compared to the normal brush these are enormous I actually do not have one and I wonder 
Yeah, that's exactly what this box is for. It holds these very, very long brushes. This is cool though. So, okay, so as we go along here, I had this idea for my channel of having more sketchbook entries where I just paint and we chat like I normally do because and I open stuff rather than just open box hauls. You guys have been requesting more and more of them and I have so many supplies that I haven't yet even tried or used. So and more are coming in by the way because I just heard from um, a watercolor company called A Gallo. They're sending me actually we've been going back and forth a little bit trying to decide what I should get because I have so much and we decided not to do the standard set that they typically have sent out which I see so many people have reviewed them so I thought well that's kind of redundant we don't need to do that so they said well why don't you pick out 12 colors that you would consider using more often that you would love to have in a set and then that way we'll send you something that maybe you'll use more often that you're really interested in so being that it's fall coming up and um, I got to pick my own palette I chose 12 colors so it'll be really exciting to see those come in and to swatch them out and, and give them a try you know it'd be really fun all right so in the sketchbook I had this idea of doing um, kind of a mix of granulating colors and doing some foliage or trees or forest or you know nature on top of them but I wanted to try and achieve something unique that really played with granulation you know so let's just kind of paint and see what I get to see where where I end up here and in the process I'll be nicely trying out all of my new brushes here and seeing what I like maybe pulling some of my other ones to compare them just to you know we can paint together so grab a cup of coffee or grab your paints and you can paint with me hopefully this is something nice to do in the background I have um, let me see these schminka sets that I customized this is a good one I'll just put this here so that I can pull paint whenever I want to. This is just water. Yeah, so um, also over the weekend, I recorded another class or finished another class for Skillshare. So those of you who are on Skillshare who have been asking me for more classes there, there is another class coming up. Yes, there is. All right, here's the test and see what this is like. This brush, oh my gosh, it handles so well. Oh, you know, it surprisingly holds a lot of water and holds a lot of paint. This is beautiful. This is a custom mix um, that I did the other day when I was uh, when I was on with you guys. And what this was, I think this was for I did this for a class that I was teaching, and this is tundra pink mixed with perline mar per perline maroon by schminky and i just love the color so this one i just got carried away with this color actually i wasn't gonna do the whole thing in it but this brush just kind of made me forget what i was doing <laughs> it did totally made me forget um so let me grab some blues i'm just using what's left in my granulating palette over here oh I love this brush oh my gosh it's a point it's got a really large belly it delivers paint it delivers a great perfect stream of water and I can get I could probably do a whole painting with this I don't even think I needed to switch a brush so I'm grabbing some of the the blue um, the deep sea blue granulation, uh, which is a mix of like, there's also some cerulean in here and I'm just kind of working it in and creating just some kind of like moody, I want like a really moody texture in the back 
doesn't matter whether the blue is on top or blue is on the bottom. I don't really mind right now. This is sketchbook. I just want something striking with a lot of granulation that um, can sit on the paper and just and look just really interesting. So you notice as I add water here, it changes the look of the color. It brings it away from too much maroon and starts to spread um, and do some more granulation. That is gorgeous. Isn't that beautiful? Can you, I hope I have this close enough. I know you guys have been asking me for more close up shots. So, I mean, I don't really know. Oh, there's a really close up shot. Okay. How about that? That's beautiful, right? My goodness. And on top of it, oh, and this even removes color. Look at that. What a great brush set. How fun. Okay. I will link up this one in my materials list because it's definitely a fab favorite. Let me grab a... I'm just going to take a paper towel because I don't have a, a really super clean rag here. Just to clean it up. I didn't bother to tape it because it's in my sketchbook and honestly I kind of don't mind the smudges at all I just don't want it to run into the next one so I'm just gonna let it pick it up a little bit that's that's beautiful all right let's grab blue for the next one let's start with the blue on top so these granulating colors I've learned and I express this in the classes that um, are available on my website. They aren't temperamental. I would say the super granulating colors by Schminky are just, they're just lovely to paint with and they just always surprise me. There's always something different, but don't be afraid to let them play together because I find that they really do well playing together. They really do. They, they look amazing together. And um, I have, let's see, the sets that I have are the Deep Sea and I have the Shire, which is beautiful. And I have the Glacier set. And I am definitely going to get the Volcano set next because I was on the fence about it. I really didn't know if I'd like it, but I received a dot card and the yellow from the volcano set was there. And this was, I mean, this was like the, the topic of one of my videos the other day was, um, what is this yellow, this mysterious yellow that I've never, I, I don't have any watercolor listing this yellow. And, uh, somebody was telling me, one of you guys was telling me that, that, what is it? PY? literally over there hang on let's get it so this one volcano you know they didn't put pigment information on these cards I didn't notice that interesting well I think it's in this book is it the, it's the Shire set hang on wait Let's just put our lavender here. Isn't that beautiful? It's so pretty. Oh, that brush. Oh my goodness. I get, you know what I like about it is it doesn't wash away the color. So this is like my new favorite granulating brush. I've been kind of wondering which brush I should use. And I have so many to choose from. Um, the travel brushes have been working great, but like, you know, you want to keep trying your brushes until you figure out which brush just, you know, really enhances the granulation. And somebody was asking me the other day, they're like, you know, what should I be buying? What should I be looking at? And honestly, I saw some people saying, oh, just use what you have. And I'm like, yeah, you should. But at the same time, if you only use what you have, you, you, you know, you might not be getting the best out of your paints and you might not be experiencing watercolor in the best way, you know, because some of these are like amazing. Who would want to not have this experience in the Shire? I mean, look at this. It, it's gorgeous, right? 
Who would want to not have this? So in any case, the PY159 that is in this yellow, that is this in the volcano. And I had never heard of PY159. I literally don't have anything with it in there because I don't have a lot of Windsor Newton. And I believe I only have like one set that was given to me for my birthday. Otherwise, I have some pans. I haven't used Windsor Newton since I first started in watercolor in college, right? So um, I don't remember PY159, but this is it. It's on the dot card and it's beautiful. So I will be ordering the Volcano set when I get around to it. But I also liked some of the Galaxy was pretty amazing. Um, this Deep Sea, I actually did not swatch it this dark when I did mine. And it's beautiful. And I got kind of a new appreciation because I don't know what they did to the dot cards. But they kind of like super, super granulate. And I guess when you put it in the pans, it works out better. But I think these are, I think these are the best of the best of their dots. <laughs> I also like the forest, but how many of these are so nice, right? Even the desert's nice. So I can see where it'd be fun to get more of them. I got tundra pink, which I love. The tundra orange is okay. I'm sure it would mix great with the tundra pink, you know, but I do like the galaxy pink. It's beautiful, really pretty. That would be a beautiful compliment to the tundra pink as well, you know? So that's where I'm at with these. And I, and I really wanted to see that, you know, that yellow in more of my work. So these are looking nice. Okay. Now this is hundred percent cotton paper. So you're going to see great things happening from this watercolor for sure. Really great things. All right. But you can't guess what this one is. I have not wanted to switch brushes yet at all because I'm going to do one more with this brush and then I'm going to try. I mean, the other ones from this set, I'm going to wait until I do the next layer for those um, because they're the same brush as this, just different sizes. So I'm adding water and kind of going over the same area again because I just want to loosen up the granulation and allow it to, you know, really just play here on the paper. God, that's beautiful. So beautiful. This is like... Have you ever made your own granulating colors? That's really fun to do as well. Really fun. I've taken a lot of Daniel Smith um, colors and mixed in things like Opera Pink or um, Nickel Azo or Cerulean um, and or, you know, Cobalt Turquoise and made some really beautiful really really beautiful mixes that I've just loved so much. I'm going to take the purple here and just drop this in. I'm going to I swear I'm going to pick up another brush in just a second, but I'm like in love with this brush right now. <laughs> this is the Escoda size 12 Prado. This is really pretty. This is the purple. Um, deep sea violet. But this was what was left over in my uh, thing. So I believe it has some other color mixed into it. I believe I put some, um, what was it called? Um, mineral, mineral violet in there. Yeah, I did. I put mineral violet. That's why it's got this beautiful, like, like a little bit of extra drama and less brown. Let's 
it's really pretty. That's just going to look, it's going to look lovely. So, yeah, so I had this kind of vision of doing these um, really kind of textured backgrounds with a lot of, a lot of tone, a lot of color. And I'll show you what I'm going to do with them if you stick around, you'll see, because we'll let them dry and we'll get out the gold paint, among other things. I'm going to do a yellow one in just a sec. God, that's so pretty. Yeah, you're right. I can see the, um, I can see the video. It is really pretty having it close up. Okay, let's switch. Let's switch our brush because I want to see. Now we know how great this brush was. So we know the other ones. The other ones are a little smaller. So what's going to happen with the other ones is they'll deliver a lot of paint, but not a lot of water. And as you can tell, the granulation just does terrific when it's got enough water in comparison to the amount of paint. What I'm doing is I'm just, this belly on this brush is so nice and large that it just sucks up the paint or sucks up the water. So I want these to dry a little faster. So I'm just going to do that. Again, if you want clean edges in your sketchbook, you can always, you can always uh, get the little quarter inch tape, painter's tape. All right, let's get the biggest one. So this is the 12 Escoda Perla in the Joseph's Buvik set. And I'm going to grab some of my, this is a little custom mix that I've had around since I did, um, since I mixed my own sunflower yellow. This is just, I left it on here and I haven't been back to it, but this is the perfect time. Perfect time. Okay. So I'm just going to put it in the center. Now I got to choose carefully because yellow will turn brown. Lots of color. It definitely delivers color. I'm going to stick with blue at first. Let's put some blues down here. This is the light blue. So we'll probably put that up here and I'm going to layer some different blues. Now when blue meets yellow, it of course makes green. So we're going to end up with this beautiful mix of greens here. And I'm going to try not to choose a blue that wants to take over everything. But look how pretty that is. There we go. Beautiful. It's really pretty. All right, let's get a little bit of this color. Now this has a little bit of helio in it, which is very overpowering. However, this sunflower yellow is extraordinarily overpowering. <laughs> okay, so now let's take this actually works, but I found that this one actually delivers a little too much water. So I didn't really need to sink it in the water as much. The point is wonderful though. The point I'm definitely going to use, but on the other one, the point is great too. So, you know, they're very similar. I guess it would just be, um, I'm trying to think. I think the other one is more absorbent. I think so. Let's see. 
Yeah, the other one is more absorbent. So for mopping um, and just kind of all over spreading paint and effects, this one is a little bit easier to use just for this particular thing though, you know, I mean, um, this is, this one is going to, the other one is going to do things that this one doesn't do. We just have to keep using it, you know, and that's typically how brushes are. They just, they will each do something really, really well. And, uh, that's why I love to buy brushes because you have them forever. I mean, if you buy nice brushes, they're not going to go anywhere. You're going to have them for a very long time. If you take care of them, as long as your dog doesn't get to them. Like mine, she got to one of mine and thus I got that nice container over there. Okay, so that's really, really pretty. See how that yellow just kind of pops forward? And if I just, if I want to, I can even, um, I can even mop up some of the color a little bit and reveal some more of the yellow in different ways just in like a nice light. It's really pretty. It almost looks like an Aurora Borealis, right? Okay. So this one, I feel like it doesn't control the water as much, but that's just my first impression right now. Let's get this here. So dipping it in water and gonna put boy it just puts down the color lovely though I feel like this would be yeah I feel like this would be one of those more detail brushes you know uh, that's not really meant for washes I think this he would use something else for washes and then he would use this for uh, you know like making straight lines or like making details on buildings you know, and doing that, that layer of detail, that's what this would be great for. So I find that, uh, this is probably better to use for the second layer of this project here. So probably after this, but I mean, again, if you only wanted to buy one set, right, if you only had this on hand, I'm just, if you just make a small adjustment, just a very small adjustment as to how you put your paint down. It definitely will give you dry brush effects really quickly and easily because I'm seeing that right now. And I'm trying to get a happy medium in the way the paint goes down. It definitely rinses out a little bit better than the other one. The um, I have one of these white ones in a travel brush and it didn't rinse out very easily. Like it's, it keeps the stain in there, but it could just be the paint. You know, if you use really high staining paints, sometimes you just don't realize they're not coming out of your brushes. You know, they'll, they'll go clean, but they won't entirely come out. So, so far, this one's not bad. It's rinsing out pretty well. I think if I put the brush shampoo in there, it would just come out. So I'm still kind of able to soften it up. I'm really not though. It doesn't pick up water as well as the other one. This delivers heavy paint and would probably do dry brushing and uh, all those little details. Like if you were needing to do more washes and large paintings um, where you want a lot of color, but you also want to work with a lot of water, this one definitely is a little more versatile. The other one I think is mainly just for very, very fine, like, cause it's, this is a lot more snap in it than this one. This one has snap, and, but it's longer. The belly's wider. And even though this belly looks wide, it really doesn't hold a lot of water. So you do get a lot more dry brush effect quickly on this one. Does that make sense? You know, where this one, you can see I was able to do washes that I typically wouldn't use only my round for. I would get maybe a wash brush instead, but this was great for these small areas to do washes. I wouldn't tackle a full page wash with this because you'd end up having to go over and over again. If you had a full page wash, you would want something like this one, which is like the Ultimo Escoda 14. 
these Ultimo brushes are excellent for washes. They're just fabulous. I have several sizes. There's an 18 that I have that I love. This is from the David Taylor set. And then I have some Da Vinci, like uh, this Da Vinci brush, the Cosmotop size 12. This came with the um, Schmincke set that's over there. That one back there, that 28 wood box set. That's what it came with. So, all right, I got a brush tour a little bit. Okay, so there are some of my backgrounds. I think I'm going to go ahead and do one over here too that goes. God, they look really good. They look really good. Um, here, I think I'm just going to use like a mono, maybe just two colors. But which colors? I think I like this blue. I think I liked this one. So I'm just going to see the dry brush when you start to have to go to a larger area it's because it's not a mop if it it's just around if it were a mop you know you wouldn't have to do sections like this you could just go in one go you just whoop and literally it, it just holds so much paint in this one I have to carefully work it in but um, that's kind of what I'm looking for right now so I want to create an interesting background that's one color which will actually kind of look like multiple colors because this is a super granulating color <laughs> how are we doing so far so what are you guys painting right now are you just hanging out with me what are you doing while you're watching this and I'm really curious if you're painting along with me on these or um, these sketchbook you know sketchbook with me type of videos are you shopping? You're already looking up the the brushes and the paints or what are you doing? Are you trying these? Are you trying the same um, the same thing I'm doing right now maybe? If you are then be sure to come and join my Facebook group because I would love to see what you painted. So I'm just kind of scrubbing right now. And because it's 100% cotton, it allows me to do that. <laughs> if you're working on uh, a cheaper paper in your sketchbook and you find it's pilling, then you definitely want to get out your wash brush and probably not scrub and just drop color in, you know, like wet the surface once and then just drop the color. I'm able to just kind of scrub and, and do all these nifty little uh, things because of the paper. I like this little dark area I got in here. And I think I'm going to build up the color down here a little more. And over here, I'm starting to get a little bit of a vision. I'll put some green. a little bit yeah this is a great brush for dropping in color because I can literally control how much color I want to drop in just add some water Okay, let's not fill the entire thing. It's so addicting to do it, but I'm just going to kind of loosely add some water and then I'm going to leave this alone and let it do something so that I'll have a vision for it later. Okay, um, and so for the last one, I guess I should put some swatches down here, shouldn't I? Just so we know what we're dealing with. Because... One thing is after I'm finished, I never remember which ones I grabbed, you know, 
when I was painting. So I pretty much grabbed everything on this palette. And some of them are almost completely gone. So this is a beautiful color. Um, you're going to kind of, I believe I picked very moody, really cool shades for the A Gallo paints too. I'm, I'm excited. So cool. They're sending me paint. How nice. I was looking at a Gallo too. I was kind of on the fence. I hadn't heard a lot about it, but I saw it on Jackson's website and I was thinking about ordering some. So this comes at a great time. You know, I'll probably order more paint from them <laughs> once I get it. That's what I always do. Okay. I think did I grab each one. Yeah, I did. So that's the range of colors that you're seeing here right now um, that I painted with. I think I did I get this one? Yeah, I did because that's this one. All right, so here's what we got so far. I think I'm going to grab my Tundra Pink. Look at the Tundra Pink. It's so beautiful. So you can see with this brush, when I start to want to wash larger areas, I have to grab a lot more water to do that where you don't have to redip. But again, if you're just using minimal brushes and you're not going to, you know, have a whole bunch of different brushes, then this, you know, get a large enough brush with a very, very good tip and a big barrel. And you literally won't have to reload it very often at all. And I think that's a big plus, you know. So I'm just scrubbing some more of my Tundra here. I'm not really sure what I'm going to do with this yet, but I kind of have a vision for this one. Yeah, we'll see. I think we'll just leave this one monochromatic and we'll go A little darker in some areas and that's something you can do with this brush that you probably you would waste way too much paint if you had to load and that's another thing is you know it's great for washes for large washes but you don't need a huge brush for everything because you would waste a lot of paint by loading you know your brush and then you don't have a point to use it past that point so it's just just there for the wash and that's it I even find that having two wash brushes is a really good idea because then you're not clearing your brush out and wasting all of your paint before you um, just to put down a second color. That's why it's great to have, you know, like even this set, having these other two brushes is really handy because, hang on, because, um, you know, if I needed a second one, I could use this one and this one. I don't have to rinse the colors out of the brushes as much. You know, this was just what was left on my palette from the last tutorial that I did for Skillshare. I did a whole bunch of tutorial videos for Skillshare using all of these colors. And um, that's going to be loaded to Skillshare very, very soon. All right. So got to wait. I don't believe in drying these with a hair dryer because 100% cotton, as you can tell, is going to change what it does. Ooh, these are drying. Yay. Ooh, cool. Oh, they dry really fast. God, these Schmincke super granulating colors. That's another thing. They dry really quick. Like, um, a lot of my other colors, they, they won't dry at all like literally they take forever even like this core I started to work on this um, little custom palette using two of the core paints and look they're still wet these do not dry and I have to say my first impression I wrote down some notes under here my first impression although these are so brilliant they somehow remind me of kids paints and I don't know what it is. I just feel like I would have to 
work with them a lot more. And I find that these paints might be really difficult for some beginners. And I think the reason why is because it's one thing to have very high concentrated paints, but you get that with Schmincke, you get that with Roman Schmal, you get that with Sennelier, Daniel Smith. But these ones being so like they run amok, right? They literally, you can't control them. You have to already know what you're going to do with them before you put them down on the paper. So there, there's a learning curve to them. On top of it, they don't dry very quick, so you can't really take them with you. Like these are all still really sticky. And then they're very staining. Like literally once I put them on the paper, they not only just want to run into each other and take over, but we're not talking about one color gone wild, right? We're talking about the entire palette of core gone wild. So I almost like want to advise people to use them with caution. And if they, if you struggle with them, dilute them very well, like put them in their own little dishes and dilute them like crazy instead of full pans, like maybe take a little color, put it in a ceramic dish and just add a lot of water and go from there, build up in layers and leave them dry in between if you want to not have them just just take over the page because they will they will take over the page so perhaps what i'll end up doing is using them when i want a certain effect and i need to add a little bit of really really brilliant color that's what i would imagine that i will use these mostly for but again that's just my first impression on core I'm going to reserve to come back and change my opinion because I cannot give you a full on opinion. That's just my first impression with them and my first thoughts until I've used them for a significant amount of time. I mean, even Schmincke, um, the super granulating colors, I'm just recently using a lot of them and falling in love with them like crazy, even though I have mixed colors so similar to these before. But if you're not a good colorist and you're not into mixing colors and you don't have a really wide range, then of course, buying these sets is the way to go because you not only get this adorable little box, but you add your full pans to it and you can like take the single pigment tones that make up the initial five pigments and then now you can play with them a lot more like whatever pigments were in these that that I purchased because they're never like just one pigment, right? Except for that yellow, but usually they're made up of two or three. So then I got those root pigments and those single pigments are now in here so that I can play. Or there's like complementing, like this mineral violet is a complementing color to the rest. And as you can see, adding it in just, it makes it just luscious and beautiful, right? Really nice. So much fun. Yeah. I'm having so much fun with these. The, um, Here's the other sets while these are drying. This is the Shire set. So, so far I have put in some compliments. I'm just on the fence with if I'm going to put a gold in here or not. And I kind of miss having it, not having it in there. But also um, Quinacridone Violet works really good <laughs> in this palette, you know, and Magenta works really good with the with the with some of them just to just to kind of shake it up a little bit I wouldn't mix it with a lot of the colors you know the greens you have to be careful mixing greens with things make sure you know what you're getting into before you add and this is the glacier so so far this is what I did with the glacier set so of course I put the tundra pink in here so now it's got these super granulating colors plus tundra pink and then I added these colors to it to start playing with it just to widen the variety of the palette and yeah that's how I play with them that's how I start building building the palettes out all right so we are ready to move on these are pretty much dry okay so let's get a piece of scrap paper so I was trying to figure out what I need something that's going to we're going to try both of these brushes I was trying to figure out what how I wanted to layer over these and first let me just take a look at this yeah I think that's it so this is the deep sea violet I'm trying like I'm dipping 
the snappy brushes in the paint to see which one wants to perform better with these fine lines. Oh, look at that. Okay, hang on. They both actually do, but this one gives us more depth of color. So I'm going to try this one to begin with because I want, see this obviously holds more water. This one holds less water. So therefore this one gives us darker values. So we're just going to dip my brush right in there and wipe off a little bit. Just get enough water in there so that I want it. I don't want a dry brush effect when I first hit the paper. Okay. Get you up close so you guys can see what I'm doing. All right, here we go. Let's see. I'm just going to play. Yeah, I like the way this brush lays color down so I can do like lighter values really easily with it. This is a great brush. This is really, really nice. Lovely. Let's pick up a little more color. Just give it a little bit more. Okay. Wow. Oh yeah. So the idea is just to have some more light and dark Okay, now it's going to get another color. Well, actually, I'm going to get just a little bit of this and let's see. So I'm going to take this color. This is the deep sea violet still. I'm doing that there and I'm going to pull that here. Oh yeah, he is right. Man, he's brilliant. He is so right. This is exactly what you never knew you needed. Terrific. Look at that. Cool. Okay. Um, hmm. I'm going to take a little bit of my cobalt turquoise. And come off of here. Let it bleed a little bit. And then I'm going to go in the back here. Yeah, so I had this kind of this idea of doing different layers, but I needed some really, really strong brushes because obviously if you don't have the right brushes, you can't pull this off. This is a time when I actually need it not to give me a ton of water because I really don't want this to bleed and I don't feel like waiting a long time. This I can fix. But I'm going to let it bleed because I just want to see that one part. So I'm just going to dry off my brush and just swipe it back a little bit. It doesn't look bad, actually. I kind of liked it. I don't know. I think I'll just... I can always get it to do it later, but right now I think I don't want it to bleed. That's good enough. Okay, so now I need a dark blue. 
So probably this one. I need to create a line. Yeah, this is an excellent brush for fine brush work. Gosh, you just never know until you try a bunch of things, huh? There we go. I like this so far. Okay, so now that this is drying, I'm going to go ahead and just add some crazy blue slotches. I don't know if this is going to be overpowering at this size. It might need to be bigger. <laughs> and then I think I'm going to throw in a little bit of cobalt. What is this one? PB16. And I'm going to let them bleed. Just put it right next to the blue. And if it wants to bleed together, it's welcome to do it. Just get really crazy wild with the palms. And then I'm going to dilute it a little bit. And splash it in the back. Put it in the center. So far, so good. It's looking good so far. Isn't that cool? It's almost like it almost layered like gouache. Now, when this dries, I can still go back and then add more color. So we're just going to leave it like that and let it just settle for a bit before I do anything else to it because I want to give it time. to do its thing before I try to add more because it's watercolor you know it's it's got to mix and just play a little bit and do what watercolor does but I love that isn't that cool okay so let's see I think I'm going to do this one next okay so let's swing over to this box and I pulled Paraline Green from my Schmincke Wood box set. Yeah, that's really pretty. I think that goes really well with this. So I need a mix of dark and light. So first I'm going to try to paint a little bit lighter with this, but if it doesn't work then, but I, I still, I still do want like a sharp tip. So let's see. Oh yeah, that's fine. Nice. Not bad. That worked. Let's add a little water to it to break it up. Good. Easy peasy. Now we're going to get some of the mix on my brush here and dilute it. Mm. Oh, I love this brush. This brush is way better than the travel brush version. What is the travel brush version? Like I have, I can't remember. I think it's in this set. There's a, a little travel brush that is like this, but it's much different. It's more for leaves, you know. I like the point. This is really cool. So I'm just going to start building my branches out here just by adding water and letting it be really diluted. I was looking at trees the other day because uh, one of my students had done some trees and what had happened is he had actually 
just done the obvious thing, which was to do the trees as you would maybe dream them, you know? So they kind of looked like cartoon character trees a little bit. And I said, you know, I was on my walk and I was like looking at trees and as the leaves start to come off of them and, you know, as you really do look at a lot of trees on a walk, especially here where I am, you, you get to realize that like trees, you see a lot more branches than you would imagine that you would see, you know, and you have to kind of keep that in mind when you're doing your trees because I think if you want to get natural trees, the branches are going to turn over on each other. They're going to do a lot of things, you know, a lot of things. So you have to realize that if you, if you want something that looks even abstract or anything in the realm of being close to nature and you don't want to look like a comic book, you know, or, you know, a children's book or something, then you do at some point have to have a little bit of realism, like even if it's an abstract, you know, like right now I'm kind of working on layers and still I'm being mindful of how trees grow, you know, and how they do like have a lot of branches and they're intertwined and it's not a perfect thing. You know what I mean? And, and even if I end up putting leaves on these, they're, they're not just going to be, um, just a couple of branches and then you don't see the branches. It's just like a great big thing of trees. You know what I mean? That's, I think, uh, the thing to be really mindful of is what trees actually represent, what they look like and all the little branches that go into them, the needleworks, you know, the, the little stems and everything breaking off and some of the branches that, that don't continue like the others and the unevenness of it. All of that has to be there. Okay. But then aesthetically you still want you still want to uh, have it look right. You know, it's not, you don't, that does not mean that you have to paint a massive amount of trees <laughs> because I've been walking down the street and seeing only one tree, you know? Okay. So to blend the base, I'm just going to see if I just add a little touch of water. Yep. That does it. That's fine. Oh, look, it does that well. It scrubs well. So I just want them kind of disappearing. Good. Okay. Ooh, that looks good. Let's let that dry for now. And let's get some gold watercolor. And you know what? I'm not going to be able to touch it yet because it's not dry. Because <laughs> this is going to spread like crazy. Okay, let's let's do another one. <laughs> let's do another one. Okay, we're over here. So we're dry. Let me think. Kind of shapes. I'm just going to put like trees that look as if they are really, really close to us. So we'll just start with that. And I want one more gold probably standing right next to it, but a different direction and a little bit different width. Start there. Now my next color, let's see, 
Let's see what this one looks like. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. I'm thinking mineral violet. Yep, I like that color better. Beautiful. So I'm just going to put some here on my paper. So if you shake your hand a little bit, I noticed that you kind of get the more uneven branches and I actually like that. So this is the one time when having an unsteady hand would actually do you good. <laughs> So I just want to add enough color to this one to make it stand out, but make it less, you know, like less apparent than this one. And I'm adding some water here to my little watercolor palette just so that I can allow some of the colors to break apart. And I'm going to just draw some ghost trees. I probably should have just drawn these ghost trees in before I put the gold on, but I needed like a point of reference, you know? So now depending on what your foreground is, isn't that pretty? Look at that color. Depending on what your foreground is, that's going to determine how light you want the back. So. I started kind of backwards, but I did it for a reason because I, I really wanted to see how dark this gold would look on this before I started layering. So if I were going to do a larger piece, now I, now I kind of have an idea of what to do where I can start, you know, layering the, the lighter colors first. And have no problem with it, you know, and feel like, oh, it's, it's, it'll work out fine. But you can always go over the gold again. So I'm not adding any more color to this because I feel like I just needed something to shadow and I want the gold to stand out. There's enough granulation going on in this anyway that we're good. Yeah, look how pretty that looks. So I'm mixing up the widths right now. I'm adding some like little spindly, very watered down. Parts of these trees. And almost filling in all the areas. Now I'm going to go and grab the darker value of the mineral violet. And hopefully it's dry enough. Oh, yep, yeah, it is. Go ahead and just paint this trunk in a lot deeper. This brush is perfect for this. It just gives me exactly what I need. And right when I need it. It's great. Just a little tap of water and it turns watercolor into almost like a gouache. You know, like it becomes a, a layer that has the ability to be transparent, but... Okay, cool. Um, hmm, I'm actually going to 
go over this tree. Yeah, it did work. Going over the gold is not the easiest. You kind of have to use a lot of paint. But I kind of like the idea that it's like intermingling. You know what I mean? So let's go over this branch. And do one more there. Okay, so now let's go back and we're going to get the gold. Boy, so far this brush is really serving it up. It's doing a good job. Let's get my gold. This is beautiful gold watercolor. Uh-oh, the huskies are waking. I'll try to get my painting in. When the world is asleep. Cool. Okay. So now I'm going to try and lay in some gold here that is equal to this big trunk. And yay. It didn't bleed. Ah, it's almost bleeding. I was hoping it was dry enough. It might not be dry enough, but that's okay. It's a sketchbook. Is this dry? Yes. Tell me this is not so cool. All right, I kind of got carried away a little bit. I, I don't know that I would do so many branches on this front tree. I might leave it like more barren, but I really like it. In any case, it's cool. I just can't decide if I should take this one out because let's see if we can remove it. Just out of curiosity. Oh yeah, I can. This brush does everything. But I think it's going to, there we go. Now let's just give us, oh God, my Husky's waking up. She's starting. I think I'm probably going to call it a day and we'll finish these up on another segment. So this one is really dark. But it looks really good. So just kind of darken up some of its branches just to bring it a little more into the forefront so we can see clearly what it's doing. But it makes you look. It really does. It makes you look. It's like, what is going on there? Yeah, so there's one tree that is in the forefront. And in order to just kind of solidify its position, we have to just paint a little thicker gold and then the other ones can be you know they can be in the back I just didn't like the branch growing across the purple one I like the purple one kind of coming forward probably what I would recommend you know before I if I were going to do this one in a larger piece I would probably do like a whole page of these you know to try them all right let's finish these two uh -oh. Um, what's it going to do with this one? So, I can't remember what I was going to do. I had an idea for this. Oh, yeah, I know. Let's put gold. <laughs> oh, yeah, I remember. Let's just put gold. Boy, this brush is perfect for details. Oh my gosh. You could probably even use this brush for gouache. 
You know, if say you really messed up a painting in watercolor and you wanted to add gouache or you just want to add gouache because because the layering effects of it, this this Joseph Zbuvik set is perfect for that. Perfect for that. Um, hmm. I'm trying to decide if I want. I think I do want. So on the other side of the water, I am actually going to do like a little island in the background. So I'm carefully doing some relief printing here. Um, so for those of you who have been asking me about Patreon, I'm not really sure yet if I'm going to do a Patreon, I, I know you want prints and that's a good way to do it. They, uh, I think we can make it work. They charge 8% as far as I can tell, um, to be able to use like all the services and stuff. So I don't know. It seems like a good idea. What do you think? What, what could I, utilize Patreon for that would be of value to you? Is it for more content? Um, for me to like, you know, if, if everybody pitches in for me to do a lot more videos? Or is it for prints? Is it for extra content outside of the classes? I mean, I, I don't really know what, what was in mind as far as uh, wanting me to set up a Patreon, but I was reading about it and it seems like I can do like postcards and send out like to the members, I can arrange to send out prints and things like that. So there's a benefit for rewards and um, being able to do some really cool rewards and product rewards. So I'm thinking maybe that was the reason why seems like almost every artist has one so there there has to be a value to it i was even <clears throat> talking to somebody who has one and they swear by it you know they they use it a lot so i guess it's a way for people to reward youtube content and there's a lot of ways to do that but you know i don't know maybe just get special privileges i think that would be it special privileges this looks good I almost feel like I want to do something here with the texture, but I haven't decided what it is. If I just, I mean, I can't really paint it turquoise because there's turquoise there already. And I kind of don't want to mess up the granulation because it looks really good. So maybe I'll just leave it. <laughs> it kind of works. I just feel like it looks too, like it's going off, like it's too much of a sand dune. Do you know what I mean? But maybe not. Uh, we'll leave it. I don't need to obsess about it. If I were going to do a larger piece, I would do a bunch anyway. Okay, so let's look at this. Oh, see how the water drips off this brush. This brush is not meant to hold a lot of water because it just drips off. So back to our pearling green, we're going to need some different, some different values here. So we're going to need, so let's, add a kind of a quirky layer here to one side and then just get some water on my brush bring it down to granulate it and take advantage of this really really amazing brush and its ability So this is the last one I'm going to paint tonight and I'm going to get to bed. So if you've hung out this long, um, please leave me a comment because I would love to know who has hung out this long <laughs> and what you did while you, while I was painting. Like, did you paint with me? Did you learn something? Okay, now we're going to go a little bit darker on this one. Okay. 
Wow, these fine lines are beautiful. It does dump a lot of paint at first though, so I'm going to have to get used to get used to it a bit. But I can really play on these intertwining branches. It's pretty cool. Good stuff. Okay. Lovely. So I think over here, or maybe this one. So this is an opportunity for there to be a, a lot of weirdness with this tree. So I'm going to bend it off. It's going to be like a little spindly. I'm still here. They tried to take me out, but I'm strong kind of tree. This perylene green is just such a great color. It really is. I love using it. It's so pretty for forests. It's going to be lovely. Okay, and here, just one more, like a smaller one. Maybe not as dark. Now, for the sake of art, I am obviously drawing some pretty sparse trees, right? Like, because if this was actual trees and they weren't dying, they would be, they would have a lot more branches. But I'm not really sure if, um, I'm not really sure if I want a ton of branches on these. I'm not, I don't know. Right now I'm kind of expanding this one a lot more than I thought I would because it looked a little bit weak. And I have a another plan here to go a little further on this layer before I quit. So Boy, these, this is the, this, this is the coolest brush. I love it. Let me just do a very light one in the background here. So obviously, uh, when I add another layer, like in the background, um, if it blends and I want this to stand out, that once it dries, I can always go back and get more in depth with the color just by adding a little bit. It's just tapping a little color on my brush. But again, you know, this is sketchbook territory. I don't know that we really need to spend this much time on them. But, you know, this is where I like to work out um, some fresh ideas. You know, like if I have a dream about something and I just want to work it out or see how a color reacts. Okay, so... This is going to have to dry. I'm going to just back off for a second and look. This looks beautiful like it is. However, I happen to have my gold pot out here. So you know the gold's got to come out. Got to do something. I'm just not really sure what yet. I'm thinking let's get this brush and get some perylene green. And... Hmm. I mean, whatever I do, it's going to take over. Huh. It looks so good. I don't really know that I want to add gold, but I really need to see what it would look like to add gold. So I almost have to destroy it just to see. <laughs> you know, you've been there. You know, you've been there. You know, you're like in your sketchbook. You're like, oh, I really like this, but then I don't want to screw it up. 
I don't know. I feel like maybe I'll just do a smaller one with what I was going to do. <laughs> I really like this and I don't want to mess it. Mm, here, let's do this. This is a good idea. So I had thought that I was going to create a little bit of front texture. And I want to hear from you if you think that this should actually have happened or not. So I was going to do that. And then I was going to grab the gold. And I was going to add gold next to the paralene green and let it just kind of blend, blend down together. And then once it dried, I was going to, um, you know, brush up some gold when I need to. Oh, I don't know. That's really pretty. Let's just do it. <laughs> Let's do it. So I'm just going to take some of our green. Let's get some of the water off my brush. I think to do this right, I just, some of it is still wet. Yeah, so let's just, let's just do the areas where it's more dry. I need to keep it really small, but it's mostly for effect. And then once I have this in there, I'll, ha I'll know if I have to add more. <laughs> now that I've messed with it. It's just so pretty. Just makes it that different, you know? It's like a little pot of gold. This is really pretty. Yeah, I'm glad I did it. It really changes it from something that um, maybe you would have seen before to something that I haven't seen before. Lovely. So I'm just going to rub some of the gold down here. It's really pretty. Yeah, I like it. Okay, let's grab just some of the darker, oops, the darker value of this. Let's dry our brush off a little bit. Nope, not dry enough. So you really want that to be in the foreground and in order to get it to really pop out it's got to be darker so I either have to use a different color like add some black or just strengthen the, the watercolor some of this area here where it blended because it wasn't dry I actually that turned out to be a happy accident I really like the way it looks in fact you can you can make that happen 
in some cases. So just by adding a little color and then wetting the brush and then just adding some water, not too much. And it will take over. It will do what it wants, especially on 100% um, cotton. Look at that. Really pretty. And look at like from the granulating color, look at the little shots of green and little shots of purple. So I, I could really like step that up um, next time, you know, and not forget to, I'm just going to add some little swatches below here and not forget to, uh, I can't tell what color that is. Okay. Beautiful. So pretty. Oh, did you see that? Hang on. Oh, wow. I'm just dropping in a little bit of the, um, the super granulating color that I used for the background. And it's giving me such an interesting effect. And it's got like those, these little blue tones, plus it makes it coordinate just a little bit more. That's beautiful. And it, just another happy accident. Let's give it a little more gold so that it can, so it can bleed. See what I'm saying? Look at this. Look at that. Oh. Pretty. Oh, lovely. That's really pretty. Actually, this is a great way to do a tree, like the leaves on a tree. I think I actually might do that next, but not tonight. All right, guys. So I'm going to leave you. Here's what we have is what we accomplished so far and I got to test out these brushes I really got a good school good schooling on my brushes here see like you really do have to start painting with them in order to see what they're going to do here can you see this other one so pretty they all look beautiful. I still think that there should be like a line there or something because it just kind of went off into the distance, didn't it? I don't know. Let's see. I'm trying to think of what. Well. Yep. And there you go. That actually worked out perfect. Do you see that? Get to focus. Come on, focus. Oh, it's too close. Huh. No, I guess that's it. Yeah, can you see it? So now it's got this little like line. It's much better. It's exactly what I was trying to. <laughs> Just didn't happen on its own. The gold looks so pretty. This looks really good. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with the way these have turned out so far. What do you think? Let me see what you painted. Go to the group page. We've got to see. We've got to connect. And tell me your story. If you're new to my channel, I would love to hear from you. Or if you've been watching for a while and you just haven't really spoken up, maybe this is a great time for you to introduce yourself and just tell me what you do and where you're from and what's going on because I would love to hear from you. All right, guys, have a good night. I hope you enjoyed this. And if you want to see more of these, then uh, ask me for more sketchbook, like what paint with me videos.